think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell the chain is going to have a task. Grab by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand the So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. Well, if you've read the title of the video, you know what this is going to be about, so I don't have to talk about anything, and you can just go home, and we can call this the world's quickest lecture on Rascorlo... 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 Fuck. Nah. Should we go into it? Eh, might as well. All right. Um, so I personally think that this is something really important to talk about. We're kind of backing up a little bit or backing sideways or going one of these directions away a little bit from operant conditioning because I do like to get you all to focus on the fact that operant and classical conditioning are interlocked, right? They are not really these awesome separate things that we talk about um, when we present the content. It's really easy to talk about them as separate things, um, but when you really start to think about it, they're not. Um, they're not the same thing, but they're definitely interlocked, okay, in a lot of ways. So when we talk about the development of reinforcers, congratulations, you're really talking about classical conditioning. So um, so let, let's let's move into a little bit of, about classical conditioning and a piece that I think is drastically important and at least help me and what I think help my students understand a little bit more about the field as a whole. So, um, so we're not going to go into the whole Rescorla model, we're not going to go into every little detail, but there's something drastically important that Rescorla demonstrated all those years ago that I want you to focus on. And it has to do with the fact that even even in classical conditioning, contingency rules the day. All right. So, and what I mean by that is that um, the predictability between um, the uh, between the U.S. and the, between the C.S. and the U.S. is what conditioning is all about. Okay. So, in Rescorla is who demonstrated that. So, we'll take a look at some of the experiments as we go along and put them up here and show you some of the details. Um, but, but in general, here's what we're talking about. So. The basic experiments, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the basic experiments talk about varying the probability between the U.S. happening in the presence of the C.S. Right? So the U.S. is the unconditioned stimulus, that's the thing that produces the reflex, right? Uh, and the C.S. is the, the, the learned stimulus, the stimulus that um, and now elicits um, a conditioned response. Okay, so what, what he did was he varied the probability that the U.S. would happen in the presence of the CS. So CS comes on, and then U.S. comes on at a, certain, at a certain rate. So how often are a certain number of trials? He varied those probabilities between 20% and 40%. In the 40% condition, this, uh, there was more conditioning. So that the, the probability was higher that the unconditioned stimulus would be present while the conditioned stimulus is there. What that means is, is that the CS predicted the US at a higher level. So it, it's pretty obvious, right? But I also want you to look at, the, the, look at what's up on the screen. So if the CS comes on and the US is there, CS and CS and CS and US, CS, US, CS, US, if you have 100% predictability, when you present that CS, it's basically always going to predict the US so the organism learns that. So they'll respond accordingly. If the CS doesn't always present or doesn't always predict the US or predicts it at a very low level, then you won't get conditioning. And he flipped, he, of course, it was a well designed experiment. So he flipped these things around um, even within the same organism and very those probabilities back and forth um, and demonstrated that you can do this, uh, you know, that you can take something um, and move it from a high probability of, uh, of being conditioned to a low probability of being conditioned even in the same organism. So again, really, really strong stuff. Uh, so what I also like to talk about here um, or, or to refocus on is that contingency, that contingent relation between the CS and US is what develops the conditioning. So if you're trying to develop a new reinforcer or what have you or work with classical conditioning, make sure that your CS is highly predictive of the US. If not, it's going to take you a lot more trials, it's going to take a lot more time, and it's going to be more challenging to get consistent, um, consistent conditioning 
if you're not making sure that that CS predicts the US. And again, the way that happens is by the CS or by the US coming on in the presence of the CS. So again, contingency is absolutely the key. Contiguity does play a bit of a role, the closeness between those. And what that's really about is the inner stimulus interval. So as long as that ISI is short between the CS coming on and the US, um, then you'll get some pretty strong conditioning and we can get into all the other stuff and there'll be videos later, or maybe there's already been videos. I don't recall because we've done this 700 of these damn things um, on um, trade conditioning, backward conditioning, uh, and uh, delay conditioning, and all those, and simultaneous conditioning. So if we look at all of those things, then, then, then we know that that ISI is important. So one of the most effective types of conditioning is uh, for classical conditioning is trace conditioning. That's where the CS comes on, the CS comes off, and then very quickly thereafter, the US comes on. So about a half a second or something like that is a great break between the CS and US. In other words, the inner stimulus interval. Um, so there you go. Um, classical conditioning is also about contingency. I just bet it wasn't like you were thinking about it. So anyway, classical conditioning, opera conditioning, interlocked. And there you go for some more scoreless work. Have a good day.